Hey everyone, as promised, I'm going to be discussing Valkyrie's attack skills, passive skills, and uh, buff skills after the core hero skill discussion. So today, uh, we're going to be talking about the attack skills of Rathgrissi. I'm not going to introduce her again. Um, in the first video, we talked about who she is, um, how she is the first boss you're fighting in TTL. Um, but yeah, today we're just solely going to focus on her attack skills. Again, just like in my usual videos, um, quick disclaimer, uh, all of this is based on my understanding of the in-game codes as well as my in-game experience. I'm not a professional developer, I'm not in any way affiliated with the developers of the game, so take everything I say with a grain of salt. Also, a lot of this may be changed by the time it gets released in the official server. So if there are some changes, please be aware that it's not going to be reflected retroactively in this video. Okay, now let's jump right into it. Oh, before I forget, um, big thanks to Team Leaks. Thanks for extracting the game files and also um, working on the translations. More power to you guys. Okay, let's dive into it then. So Rathgrissi, um, as we discussed, is a hero skill. Therefore. All of her attack skills are reminiscent of MOBA attack skills. So all in all, there are three attack skills for Valkyrie. One is um, the Holy Fetter Judgment, which is you know basically Valkyrie flying up and then striking down her enemies. The second one is called Feather of Order if that's the right translation which is pretty much like the skill from Gilgamesh in Fate Stay Night I, I think that's the that's the name of the anime yeah pretty much opens up a portal and then a lot of feather blades um, fly out of it to damage your enemies and then the third skill is called Call of Heroes which is a wide AoE that pretty much summons replicas of Rathgrissi to deal damage, um, basically casting ho Holy Feather Judgment to the enemies in range. So these are the three skills. Uh, we're going to talk about all of them um, in a bit. Okay, so let me just show you uh, first. So before before we go there, please be aware that some of your skills will be utilizing the feathers. So for example, Call of Heroes and Holy Feather Judgment will be using um, the feathers. So you have to make sure you have feathers so that you can cast them. Because if you don't, then you see here, you will not be able to cast it unless you generate a new feather. So this is Call of Heroes. So as you can see, there's a wide AoE and then you basically deal damage. It's very similar to Ogare. Um, Holy Feather Judgment looks like this. Uh, flies up and then dives. Now, it all looks cool, but I don't know if you realize when you are fighting people, that delay could mean they've or they're already they're already out of range, right? I mean, it's like, it takes about one or two seconds before she actually casts, and I don't know how it's gonna look like. I haven't fought a Valkyrie in PvP yet, but if I see someone flying up like Goku casting his Spirit Ball, I'd probably teleport away, right? I wouldn't be sitting there waiting for it to hit me. But anyways, um, I think it looks pretty cool, right? I mean, visuals looks pretty nice. Um, however good it is in application, we're gonna find out. Um, Feather of Order, um, the second skill is this one. So you see this targeting, so very reminiscent of Thanatos Phase 1 that doesn't have level 7 unlock and the uh, first iteration of MDB. But yeah, so as you cast it, right, it creates a portal and all of these feathers spring out dealing high rate of damage to your enemies it's a pretty good skill if you ask me because you can run around right um do this right by the time you know i think i think at most you can get two up right even if you're fast so yeah i think it's pretty 
decent, right? It uses SP, doesn't use any of your feathers. Yeah, but it's a pretty good skill, if you ask me. And then lastly, it's Call of Heroes. Like what I said, um, it's gonna cast your um, first skill, which is Holy Feather ju Judgment um, randomly across enemies within the range. So overall, I think her arsenal of skills is pretty good, right? Um, although, again, the skill, right? <laughs> Probably running away by this time. Okay, now we'll dive deeper into each of these skills. Just talk about some of these parameters and some of the effects and also the damage calculation. So let's dive straight into it then. Um, you know, especially with the first one. Now the first one is um, Holy Feather Judgment. Like what I explained earlier, you know, when you use this skill, Valkyrie will rise up in the air and then attack the enemies. It goes up to level 10 and the parameters at level 10 are as follows. Launch range, which means it's a distance before you can launch it, is 9. So it's 9 cells. So from where you stand, there's about 9 cells um range where you can cast it so it would be pretty good if you zoom out right and you know since rom already enabled a pretty far zoom out when you're using the skill it'd be pretty good if you zoom out just so you have higher visibility and you can tap onto onto more distant cells cooldown is about five seconds the cast delay is one second which if you ask me is pretty pretty okay like what I said, the ready time is one second. This is basically Wrath Grissy flying up in the air. So that's the one second ready time. The logic is skill point range, wherein again, it's that circular AOE thing you just point, right? It's a point range. <laughs> and as she flies up, there are two chant buffs. Now, I haven't seen this in any other skills before. But basically, as she chants, there are two buffs that she uses. So one is this one, 120068, which is actually, if I'm not mistaken, is kind of like the play dead buff, which means if you're probably using this in PvE, um, the enemies are going to lose aggro. I don't know how relevant that is, right? So you won't be attacked. I'm not sure how well this how this functions exactly in PvP. Is it gonna be similar to Thanatos um, Phase 3 Vanish? Right, maybe we can test it out in the future, but um, it's, gonna, it's a little bit difficult to test it out in CBT because of the limited number of players. But yeah, whether this is gonna look like the Thanatos Vanish or not, I think it's, uh, it's gonna be a big deal, basically. Because if it's not, and Valkyrie's just sitting there like a duck, then it's a pretty bad skill, right? You're stuck there for one second, people can attack you. Um, the second buff while chanting is the forbid use of amounts. So if you notice, if you notice in here, um, let me show you real quickly. You look at my mount, by the time Valkyrie cast it, my mount will actually be disabled. So I can't use the mount to cancel the animation Right? Um, I don't know who gave them that idea, but yeah, I can't, you can't cancel the animation using the mount because you can't equip it while you are chanting the skill. Field area cannot immune basically means it can't be blocked by um, LP, land protector, or earth field. Um, range equals to 4 is basically the range. Like when she lands, right, there's a 4 cell AOE with her at the center that it deals damage so if you look at the video that's playing right i'm dealing damage to three dummies dam change per or the skill multiplier is 33.5 which is 3350 if i'm not mistaken so again there are skills that are higher than this but not too bad either also for those that she hits there is a knockback which is a one cell knock knockback um, effect. Um, it's similar to Saitama, but Saitama's knockback is very far. This one is just one cell. Okay, the buffs, this is probably one of the best things I like about Valkyrie. 
the buff that she deals when she casts this is Disarm. Yes, it's the same debuff that Nuka uses. It's the same debuff that um, Soulbinder uses when he turns you small and then he casts one of his skills. I forgot the name, sorry. But yeah, you basically can't cast any magic skills or physical skills during this duration. It's not long, but you know, just having that split second um, time where your enemies aren't able to cast skills is a big thing. Okay, damage calculation. Now this is the letdown. I'm gonna be pretty upfront. With the exception of Thanatos, all of the damage calculations that they've been releasing so far is a letdown. There's nothing special, there's nothing new, there's nothing there's nothing intuitive, there's nothing interesting about the damage formula. It's just straightforward. So as you can see, right, you get base attack again. This is used for attack final. So as you can see, base attack is still the same thing. Strength multiplied by 2 plus strength multiplied by strength over 100 plus this and that. Attack final, still the same thing, no changes, right? So basically attack percentage, size correction, size damage, element, damage to element, um, and then adding the base attack, race, boss param, boss param, too. still the same thing. Um, and then, you know, it also uses magic attack, surprise, surprise, right? Pretty much like Thanatos, pretty much like, um, you know, Rune Master, it uses magic attack. Um, and the way the magic attack is computed also is the same thing, nothing new. And then, you know, once you get attack final and magic attack final, it's just going to multiply it straight with the other parameters that are also present in other skills. So, again, nothing new about this. Um, pretty straightforward skill. So, I'm not expecting a lot from this skill, but the disarm is really good. Okay, the next skill um, we're going to be talking about is Feather order or order of feather or whatever it is but like what i've shown earlier right it's about um you know creating these portals right and then it deals damage um pretty good like you see the rate of fire right this is this is a very good way of circumventing the um the hp shield of a lot of the um the HP shield of the instance bosses because there's a certain you can only deal a certain amount of damage per attack so I think it's pretty good um, if you can see if you don't watch your SP right I mean if you're just blindly casting it you're probably gonna run run out of SP although SP is not really a problem right you can just pop hunt honey or whatever potions you have right so I don't really see it as a big problem but anyways it consumes SP not the feathers Okay, now going into the details of the skill. Again, the skill goes up to level 10 as well, right? Um, and the parameters are like this. The launch range is eight cells. So which means the point where you can launch it, there's a distance of eight cells, um, which is a little bit tricky because as you can see, right? Um, Valkyrie will check the distance between her and the target, not necessarily where you want to place it. So it's a little bit tricky if you're going to auto cast it. Maybe you're not going to get the most out of um, out of the range of it. So to be honest, I, I'm not sure whether it's better to do it manually or via auto, right? Because if you do it via auto, right, if you're far let's say here like this right you're gonna cast it from here and so what's gonna happen is you're hitting that first person but the one behind them probably won't be within range but at the same time if you do it manually you're stuck with this poor mechanics anyways um, the cooldown is 1.2 seconds and the delay the cast delay is one second which is I think it's good um, it attacks at a total of 8 times, right? And then the distance is 8 meters. 
the width is three meters so as you can see the there's a width right it's eight by three so it's a rectangle um, and then the interval of fire or the rate of fire is half a second so every half second it fires off or it deals damage it is counted as trap so i mean don't get confused i'm not saying it's the same trap as the ones that stellar hunter uses it's just that from a game's perspective it counts as it it does trap is it gonna be removed by skills that remove traps i have yet to try it out Range num is equals to 10. If you notice, the first skill that we were talking about didn't have range num, which means if it lands on 100 people, like if coincidentally speaking, on that same cell there's 100 people, it's gonna hit, it's gonna hit all of them. However, um, Feather of Order has a maximum number of targets, which is 10, which means even if there's 200 people standing on the same spot, you only deal damage to 10 of them. Now, don't be disappointed, this is just normal. A lot of skills have this parameter. The dam change per is a little bit lower compared, sorry, it's a lot lower compared to, um, to the, the other skill. It's only 15, but it's because it deals it so many times, right? So the 15 multiplier is on one instance, and if you deal it so many times, then I think at the end of the day, you're basically getting more out of it. So that's it for the parameters. Um, in terms of the buffs that it does, um, let me just quickly go through this. So the buffs that it does, uh, the first one is it applies root. Okay, no move, this one. So no move equals to one, state effect equals to nine, state effect nine is basically no move which is snare yes you guessed it right if you have edgar or if you wear dokebi and you wear you wear dokebi on the armor and then deposit it you will be immune to the snare effect although i do like that it has snare effect because it basically i mean for those who doesn't have any of those right i mean it's it's a pretty good way of keeping them on the spot so you keep them on the spot using the feathers and then you just dive right into them. It sounds good on paper. I don't know how easy it is to actually execute. But anyways, um, the other thing it does is with every hit, it reduces death percentage of the enemies by 10%. And it stacks up to five times, which basically means at the end, they have minus 50% death percentage. Does that mean you can relax a little bit on your ignore defense? Uh, depends on the circumstances, but yeah, um, they will basically be having less death percentage as they get hit with this. Now one caveat though, this is dispersible. This is the flag I've been talking about earlier, right? Is disperse equals to one? So this basically means it can be removed. So if you're fighting another Valkyrie, uh, chances are their level 4 skill from core hero skill will likely still remove this Similar to the to the root of course So yeah, there are other effects which is actually part of the passives um, And I'm just gonna talk about the passives in a separate video But yeah, there's another effect to this which I will not be discussing right now It's gonna be in a separate video Damage wise, again, it uses the same formula as, uh, sorry, it uses the same formula as, as your holy feather judgment. It's just an if statement in it, so I just extracted those that are relevant. So let me just zoom out a bit. Okay, uh, yeah, hopefully you can still read this. But basically, what it does is it you know, collects base, I mean, just the usual ones, right? But before that, um, there's actually a star rune, which is called Aurora Holy Feather, which increases your skill multiplier or dam change per um, whenever you have more than 200% move speed. And so as you increase your move speed, you get a bonus, right? It multiplies your dam change per by the value of that rune. 
um, definitely something that you need to have and definitely getting more than um, 200% move speed per is very important. Okay, now once it multiplies it to this, then it's just gonna use a new value into the skill. Again, nothing special, so I'm not gonna dwell into that again. Um, like what I said before, there is another skill, um, a passive skill that affects this uh, Feather of Order skill, which is called Order of Punishment, wherein it basically auto procs it based on certain conditions. I'm gonna dive deep into that into the next video, but this is how it's computed. It's a combination of the skill level of Feather of Order and Order of Punishment, and so that's how it computes the amount of damage it will do. That auto proc is also being affected by the move speed bonus. Sorry, the the bonus of the Aurora Holy Feather Star Rune. So again, very important to pump up your move speed. Okay, now the last skill or the last attack skill for Valkyrie, which is called Call of Heroes. You know, remember earlier I was showing you the Holy Feather Judgment, right? So I don't know when the last time you did, you know, Thanatos Tower, but you know, Valkyrie has this skill where she summons all of these replica of her, attacks you once and then dashes to deal damage. In theory, this is it, right? I mean, it doesn't look exactly like it, but this is it. You see those, those lightning-like effects? Actually, I think that's supposed to be Valkyrie, you know, attacking from above. And actually, if you slow down, maybe if I can take a slow one, maybe it will start looking like that. But anyway, so it's an AOE, right? The prerequisite is you need to have um, feather charges. If you don't, you'll not be able to cast a skill. But once you do, then you will be able to. Again, the number of times or the number of Valkyries it will summon to randomly attack will be dependent on the number of feathers you have, which means if you have four feathers, you will be able to, you know, to summon four Valkyries. And those four, four Valkyries will try to attack randomly within that range. So yeah, let's pretty much go into um, the details of this skill. Uh, let me zoom in. So again, Call of Heroes, right? Only a level one skill. Um, the launch range is 8. Now I know it looks a little bit odd because again it's an AOE skill um, but then there's launch range. The reason for that is because you can't put the skill in auto and what it basically does, and let me see if this one works, right? If I go to training dummy, it's, it will start walking. Once it was within 8 meter range, it will start casting it. So again, not a good decision to put this skill in auto because you see there are five enemies but it only walked until it was able to hit that one training dummy. Okay, um, launch range again 8, uh, cooldown is 27 seconds, it's fixed cooldown, you can't reduce it. Um, the castle is 1 and then the logic is again random target within the range. Obviously, if you only have one target, it's always going to be that one target. Um, so the center range is basically, you know, it's just basically saying from you, there's eight cells. Interval is every three seconds and the range is three, which means um, if these guys were pretty close to one another, right, they, that one Valkyrie attack would likely hit them. You know, all of them. I mean, those within the three three cell range. And again, f since it is a range, like when one of those Valkyries come down to attack that particular target, um, there's a maximum number of people it can hit. Now, don't get confused, right? It's not the AOE of Call of Heroes. It's the AOE of those individual Valkyries casting Holy Feather Judgment that has a range of 10, range num of 10. Which means if there's like 10 people in this spot where it just attacked, those 10 people will get hit. If there's 15, only 10 of them will get hit. So again, it doesn't mean that if there's like, 
more if there's more than 10 targets within the range it will not consider the others no it doesn't work that way it's those individual attacks okay in terms of the buffs that it does again because it's holy feather judgment it will be applying a debuff which is this arm so it you will not be able to deal magic skills no physical skills either and yeah and then obviously the second line here is just a debuff i mean sorry it's just the buff that puts you in that state okay in terms of in terms of damage calculation like what i said nothing special it's just it it bases it off of this of the level of holy feather judgment so as you can see here it gets the level right so it's 10.5 plus the level of holy feather judgment multiplied by 2.3 so you add that and then you multiply it by 1.5 that's it so yeah um you may be asking me you see what's what's my take on this i think as a damage dealer pretty decent not the best obviously in pvp you're faced with um several challenges i mean one is this hero doesn't have an innate ignore defense the only ignore defense you have is that negative death percentage it applies right um so you're gonna have to stack up on that uh the second portion is i don't know if you've noticed there's no skill hit bonus which means you also have to build for hit and so if you are planning to deal damage at the same time you're planning to be tanky i am not so sure how this will play out but yeah so up to you guys again these are your attack skills hopefully you are able to make a decision out of this again um after this i'll probably work on creating a video for her passive skills and then her buffs but i think i'm gonna do that probably around next week or so so in the meantime, if you have any questions, if there's something you want me to test out, let me know in the comment section below. Or if you, if you know, you are in the Discord uh, channel, you just feel free to message me. Again, thanks everyone for watching and you have a nice day.